Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video we're going to be talking about game objects and the transform component. So a game object is basically anything inside of one of your scenes that has a physical presence inside of the game. Now not every game object will be visible or uh, able to collide with objects inside of the game, but every game object does have what's called a transform component. And what the transform component contains is settings for position, rotation, and scale for that object, meaning that it has a specific location inside of the game. Uh, it has a rotation, basically how the sprite or model would be oriented inside of your game. And then it has a specific size, which is determined by the scale of the object compared to its original size, or how, in this case, you imported it uh, as a sprite inside of Unity. So inside of the hierarchy on the test scene one, we can see that I have two game objects currently. Uh, one I just created called Jeffrey the Dude, which contains a transform component over here in the inspector, but also a sprite renderer component. That's how we're able to see this little guy with the crown in the uh, scene viewer. And its position is relative to the center point or zero zero inside of our scene. The second game object in this scene currently, which generally is going to belong to every scene in your game, is the main camera. So in this case, the main camera game object has its own position, just like every other game object, but it also has this camera attached as a camera component, and it also contains a GUI layer component, a flare layer component, and an audio listener. Now, later on, we'll be talking about how to add your own components, but uh, for now, if you were to create a mono behavior script, you can attach those scripts to specific game objects in your scene as you would want them to be. So, for instance, one very, very common thing would be to attach a player controller component, probably a C-sharp script you wrote or someone else wrote through the asset store, and you would attach that as a component here, uh, thus giving the player or the uh, the character the ability to move based on the settings in those scripts. Now if you want to create a new game object it's relatively simple. You can either go up to the game object menu here at the top and choose create empty or one of I guess you would call them prefabs which basically are game objects that already have some stuff attached to them. For instance if you want a text game object, it's going to automatically render on the canvas, uh, which is automatically created when you don't have one. And it's going to contain not only a transform, in this case a rect transform, which is slightly different, but it's also going to contain a text UI component. And by double clicking on that game object, we can see the game object as it's located within our scene, or in this case within our canvas. So since we're covering transforms right now, to point out the difference between a rect transform and a base transform, a regular transform only has a single position inside of your scene, and then you would scale the model or the sprite up, but that transform only tracks the center position or the anchor position for that sprite. Here with a rect transform, we can instead specify the size of this component entirely. So not only is it located at position negative 240x and negative 225x, and by the way, that's with reference to the canvas. So we're working on a different scale here than the other game objects in the scene because this is a UI game object. But also, taking that center point, we can stretch this out as a rectangle by specifying a width and a height. So for instance, if I change the width and the height to new values, we can see how this rect transform serves as basically our typing space for whatever text we want to have going on inside of the game. So a few more quick things for this video I want to show you guys. If you want to add a new component to your game object, which will give it extra capabilities, you would go to add component and you can search through quite a few different options you have here that are default ones. You can also add in mono behaviors from your own scripts and anything you've picked up from the asset store, which serves as a component for your game objects. In future videos, we'll obviously be talking a lot more about what each of these components and the categories do, but for right now, let's leave it at that. Two more ways of defining our game object are tag and layer up here at the top in the inspector. These are both identifiers or ways of categorizing our game object, basically what type it is. 
The difference between a base tag and a layer is that layers are actually used within the physics engine for the game. So if you want something to be on the same physics layer where basically you're defining what it can collide with other things or how it interacts as far as physics go, then you're going to want to specify a layer. So that might be in a projectiles layer or a background layer. Um, but if you want to define a type that's separate from that, you can come over here to the tag menu and define it as something like player, where while you're writing your scripts, you can call methods such as find object by tag, and then Unity would be able to locate those objects and return them so that you can reference them inside of your scripts. But for right now, that's going to pretty much cover transforms and game objects within Unity. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.